Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody out there? This last Sunday in September, and the next Sunday it'll be October already. So let's go ahead and open up our service in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. We thank you for the country that we live in, that we're freely open and um, able to come and worship you in a house of God. And we just thank you for our country that we live in. We thank you for this beautiful day, for this house, for our speaker today. Lord, open up our hearts to receive what you have for us today. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we've got some prayer requests here. Um, uh, Andy and uh, Raymond's uncle uh, passed away. We want to remember the family um, during this time. Um, we also have other prayer requests on there. Please keep those folks in your prayers. Pray for our servicemen and women, our nation, our leaders. Um, we do have a president of the United States, whether he's Republican or Democrat. We need to uphold the president of the United States. He is under attack. Um, God has put him into office for four years, and we need to support him. Um, we have a youth fundraiser for fresh eggs. We have Operation Christmas Child, uh, September. We need small toys and games. We'll also take shoe boxes if you have them. Um, today, Julie's going to be ministering with us. And um, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, there's an anniversary celebration for me and my husband. If that, everyone is welcome to come at 4. Um, we have family night Wednesday, and Sandy's going to be speaking. Um, upcoming on October 12th, we have a 10 o'clock to noon jewelry fundraiser. This is for Operation Christmas Child. Um, it's a lot of beautiful jewelry, a lot of gift items um, in jewelry if you are getting ready for the holidays. And that's going to be Saturday the 12th from 10 to noon. We'll have light refreshments for that. So let's go ahead and have our kiddos come up for Children's Church. Be excited. Oh, they're all dressed up. The future of your church right here. Yeah. Right there now. There comes two over there. as a princess. We've got guys, girls. All right. All right. And then uh, let's go ahead and pray with these young people. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with these young folks, Lord. There are future, uh, should the Lord tarry, there's pastors and um, pastors' wives, and there's worship leaders, um, husbands uh, for, for future wife. We just ask you, Lord, to open their hearts and minds and to receive what the teachers have for them today that's brought to you from the Lord. Take that home with them, seal it in their hearts. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Okay, and then let's go ahead and take up our tithes and offerings this morning if our ushers will come forth. I have a real uh, special prayer request. Okay. My granddaughter is getting married spots on the baby's brain and she celebrated her sixth birthday because we prayed and this church prayed for her and her name is Paisley and she started kindergarten and it's a testimony that the Lord will will intervene and protect that child um, and, and get it until the time it, it, it can be born so what is your granddaughter's name? Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Let's go ahead and take this uh, would you please pray over that this morning for Cheyenne and her unborn baby and they're in Phoenix. 
Bless the Lord for coming to the throne this morning, Lord. The attack, the Lord, for the child of Cheyenne, Lord, that you would heal her and meet that need, Lord. We just praise you, Lord, and praise you for the time and offering today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. We're going to get into worship this morning. Amen. Amen. Who's ready to worship? Worship. What? Am I in the wrong spot? Hold on. Oh, no. We're here. So, who's ready to worship? Amen. You know, worshiping the Lord, he commands us to do that. Why? Because worship doesn't edify us. It uplifts us, right? But it edifies God. And worship takes care of things like that little baby and that mother. That's it takes right. care of things like those who have lost a loved one. It okay. takes care of all these things if we worship, right? So who is ready to worship? Father, 
We just pray, Father, that our hearts are in the right place. Yes. That, Father, you will watch over this service, yes. the music, the singers, the instruments. But, Father, you will watch over your words, Father. That the message that will be sent, Father, that we will hear it. That we will take it. And that we will share it. And we just thank you, Father, for that right now. Come now is the time yes. for sure.
that he is worthy, worthy of all praise, worthy of all honor, worthy of all grace. We get that grace, amen, hallelujah. This is my desire, so this is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise, because all that I adore is in you. Amen. 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 
I appreciate that. It's good to be here with you this weekend. I'm having a blast getting to know some of you. There's Steve. I, I got to know him yesterday. Spent a lot of time talking with Steve. It's a blessing to be here with you. I have been in the ministry for too many decades. And uh, so God is, uh, I man, I'm in a great place in my life. I, my life, when I gave my life to Jesus back in 1974, it's been an adventure ever since. Every day I get up and I'm going, well, okay, Lord, what is it going to be today? And I want you to know I love that adventure that is called the Christian life, living that sanctified life. So I'm grateful to be a child of God and uh, be saved and know where I'm going. And uh, I look forward to that day as well. Romans 8, we get to get Romans 8 today. And I want you to know, uh, I, I've been challenging for 30 years, men and women, boys and girls, whoever memorizes chapter 8 gets 100 bucks. I'll throw that out there. Anybody right here in this congregation wants to memorize Romans 8, you can get my card. I'll give you $100 as a motivation. Doctor. Because I believe it's the heart of Romans, and I believe the Romans is the book of the uh, heart of the New Testament as well. So I'm glad you get to hear Romans 8 today. I get to hear it one time. I can't wait to hear it the second time. Yeah. God got a hold of my, uh, my ministry life in 2016. Every year I, I re-up with Jesus, and I just have this conference with him. I said, what is it this year that you want to reshape my life? What are the things that you want to uh, keep retooling in my life? And again, I was in a comfortable church, in a comfortable home, in a comfortable ministry. Everything was comfortable. Everything was good. And I was loving it, but I wanted to be uncomfortable. And so I said, all right, here's where I'm at right now. I want to finish my ministry years and season in an uncomfortable position. So he began a process many years prior to that, as I knew about Alongside Ministries as a church. We, vol we volunteered with them. We supported them. And I had known the founder. I had known how to, uh, I started going in, and I started preaching and teaching in the prisons. And I fell in love with the color of orange, to be real honest with you. And then in 2016, he began a process with the founder to retire. And I then was able to, long story short, become the new executive director of Alongside Ministries. What is Alongside Ministries? It is a prison transition ministry where we disciple men and women that love Jesus on the inside. We go in and we do these services and Bible studies on the inside, teach the Word of God, and then we find the heart of a man or a woman who loves Jesus, who wants to grow in their walk with Jesus, and we begin to disciple them through our materials. And we put a mentor in their life. And this was the uh, pilot program that was started 20 years ago here in the state of Arizona. And that pilot program worked with the founder and the state chaplain to begin the process of working with the men and women on the inside. And what we do that makes us unique is we do this process on the inside and then that mentor follows them on the outside. This is discipleship. We call it mentoring because the state understands us. But it's biblical discipleship. So we begin this discipling process inside. We follow them on the outside. I want to back up just a second. We have a problem in our country and we have a problem in our state. Our statistics are real similar to the national average and the state average is real similar. Seven out of 10 men and women will recidivate. They will go back to prison once they're released. Okay, that's a problem. It costs you $35,000 for every bed that is filled with an inmate that hits you. So we have a problem that hits your community. If you Google it, you'll probably find how many felons are in the Kingman area. They're here. They're your neighbors. And they need to understand how to recidivate in a positive way. So we have a problem. It's financial. And we have a heart condition. So we go in and we try and give them the hope of Jesus on the inside, like most prison ministries. They, again, get discipled inside. They come out to us. And what we have found, the secret to understanding, I think it's written somewhere, is go make disciples. So what we do is we find that heart, we put a disciple in their life, and we bring them out to community, the body of Christ. What we have in Phoenix, this is where our hub is, is we have homes where our men and women come out to, and they understand biblical community for the very first time in their life. And this is where we get to see 
hearts and lives transformed because of the power of Jesus Christ and the leading of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And we just, I want you to know from 2016 where I asked to be uncomfortable, I get to see more lives transformed in a short period of time than the 40 years that I did in working in the church ministry. Because these men and the women are hungry and their desires to change and I get to see this change happen. It can be messy and challenging, but I want you to know I'm excited to where God has put me right now in my life. And I want you to know our numbers are this. Seven out of ten when we're recidivate. If they finish the program with us and they graduate and we celebrate that graduation with them, nine out of ten will not recidivate as a result of it. Here's what I'm doing. I'm working with Greg and I'm trying to find the churches on the outlying areas other than Phoenix. We do all the prisons near Phoenix, Florence, um, I, you know, Perryville and uh, Buckeye and all those places that are close to Phoenix. This is a little bit farther out. I have men that have been accepted in the program in Kingman that need men to come alongside and mentor them. So that's why I'm here with Greg, to kind of find churches that we can partner together. I can help you, train you, and get you ready to go into those prisons and bring hope to men and women as well. That's what we're doing. That's what I love doing. And I'm glad to be here this week. This morning. Thank you. Thank you. That's exciting news. That's exciting news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, keep it in prayer. If not anything, he's gonna, Ken's gonna be back there. He's a very real guy uh, when we leave. And ask him some questions, you know, and he'll give you some answers. And, uh, you know, we're a church that's active, so uh, let's activate into our community. Amen. Now, yes. my sister, Julie, coming up with the word from God for us. In Jesus' name. I said it at early service, but breakthrough is good, but follow through is much more important, right? Yes, yes. We always get breakthrough, but when we don't follow through, then it, we don't sustain that breakthrough, and we need to steward it. And so I just love that work. Just please go out there and talk with him, see all the stuff out there, support him, and thank you, Greg, for bringing him, and what an awesome, amazing thing. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much that we get to be in your house, and you're actually home. <laughs> We love you, Father. Thank you for being here. We just rebuke and resist every spirit that would come against your word, that would come against your work, that would come against your light. We rebuke every spirit that's trying to rob us of what you have for us today, Father. We thank you that we have the power to do so in your name. And so we just decree and declare that this word will go forth, that you've asked me to say as your vessel, as your clay pot, be released and go in and find its place and plant deep, Father, that it may produce fruit, a fruit that will remain. And Father, everyone in here, I ask that they would surrender to you, Lord. Surrender to the process. Surrender to you. And we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So I just want to go over a couple things really quick. I have some more of these flyers for you to pass out. Um, how many know that there's sex trafficking going on all over? Yes. Sex trafficking, okay? So we need to bring awareness to that. I've been working with the Milagro Foundation um, and Flagstaff, Lilies of the Valley, and it's uh, women's ministry that I, I do and we work with the Milagro Foundation in Flagstaff and what it is is it's a quine therapy they have a ranch where they use the horses and the dogs and stuff and we just went up on Friday night to watch a movie called Amber and Grace a lot of you in here went, raise your hand who went, wasn't that awesome? Yeah. Um, it was a movie on a young girl who was actually rescued from sex trafficking and she was in it and how God used the Milagro Foundation uh, to bring her total and complete healing and now um, I mean, I think it's really, really important. So there's a couple things that are happening here in Kingman. On October the 19th, we're having a walk 
uh, against sex trafficking, making, bringing people, making people aware, giving them the tools that they need. It's at Metcalf Park, and that's what Greg is passing out right now. I want you to get involved in that, or if you know somebody who has a real heart for trauma victims, to get involved in that. Um, I think everybody should, yeah. honestly. I mean, yeah. it's, it's really, really important. And then also on October the 3rd, uh, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., over at Greg's Prayer House, uh, 2851 Airway Avenue, um, the McCain Institute's coming down. Um, and they're gonna be talking about sex trafficking awareness and they're doing some sessions and there's a couple people gonna be there. Um, but uh, I actually met a woman and spent a couple hours with her in my office talking about uh, how God sent her here from Texas six months ago and she's heading up this walk at the park and, and uh, her name is Elvia um, Wilson. And if you want to get in touch with her, if you want to get involved, help her out, support her. How many know that's important in the body of Christ? We support one another and all of our missions. Like Greg and I, we support one another. Even yes. He has a different kind of work. I have a different kind of work. Yes. We all support one another, right? Yes. So yes. contact yes. her and find out if she needs any help. If you want her email, um, just come and see me and I'll happily give it to you. Wow. This okay. morning we're going to go over Romans 8. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to say excuse me if I jump around, okay? It's legal in this service, right? <laughs> I love them. Um, just every, God is just doing an amazing work in the body of Christ. How many feel and sense something new coming? Woo! Yes. 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 Well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Tonight at sundown is Rosh Hashanah. It's the yes. new year, okay? And in Israel. And it lasts for two days, so just know that uh, how many are familiar with Rosh Hashanah? Yeah. Two, three, four. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look into it. Tonight at sundown, it's amazing. We should be standing with Israel. The things that happen in Israel is a type of the shadow of what happens with us. Okay? We're all one. So God says to watch Israel and the times and the seasons are very, very important. And so it's it's really like the birthday of the, of the earth. And it's a celebration of when God created Adam and Eve. There's a lot to it. But it's also the beginning of the whole high holy days which is a time of reflection. And you know, the 10 days of all come after that, but it's a time of reflection, a time of repentance, and a time of blowing the shofar. Yeah. A time of noise, okay? Which, you know, we probably honestly need to work on a little bit. Blow the shofar. <laughs> noise. <laughs> it's okay to make a joyful noise in the house of God. I like noise. Noise is very powerful when it's directed to heaven, right? Yes. Uh, look, how many know Satan makes a lot of noise? Oh, yes. I mean, come on. Let's show him up. Let's make a lot of noise for Jesus. Where's my shofar guy? He needs to be here right now. But praise the Lord. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, Romans 8 is very powerful. I mean, I've always, always um, just been fascinated. The whole word is just amazing. But Romans 8 is like there's so much depth to it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to read out of the uh, Passion Translation. Um, I also have, you know, uh, my King James Version and all that. That's good, too. But the Passion Translation, what it does is it gives it more depth, breaks it down with the Greek and the Hebrew sense, so you can kind of understand what the Lord is saying. You're welcome to study it out and research it. I want you to. Trust me. <laughs> I want you to get curious and dig a little deeper Amen. because God has some things that he wants to show you. So if you have the NIV, you'll be able to go along with me a little bit in Romans 8. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down for you. And we're going to uh, kind of, we didn't get, what, partway through the first service, but that's okay. So if I keep you a little bit, forgive me. If you have to go, that's fine too. But I really feel like this is something God wants me to get out for you. It's so, so, so powerful. Um, it has to do with, this is Paul's letter. He's talking about the letter of the law versus the letter of the spirit and the difference between that. Um, a lot of people sometimes don't understand the letter of the law and kind of use it as like this is a religious system. And yeah, that's, that's partly true. However, God used the law as a holy thing. He used the law to expose and eliminate, illuminate the sin that's in our life. So the law was, it's not the law that's bad. <laughs> okay, it's the sin that it exposes in us that's bad. Now, we're doing, God has done away with the law because Jesus fulfilled it, right? You with me? Yeah. I don't want to lose you. So I'm trying to set a foundation here for you so we can go into Romans 8. So the law was brought for to expose the sin, and it's holy. And so um, I'm going to read uh, chapter 7 just to kind of go over a couple verses with the first to, to build a foundation. 
a little bit in there, and then we're going to go into uh, chapter 8. And uh, let me open up my King James Version. So I've had this, this Bible for like 25 years. It's falling apart. So someone bought me this uh, Passion Translation, and oh my goodness, it's so amazing. Um, line upon line and precept upon precept is so very, very important. So, um, if, if you have a question or if I'm losing you, raise your hand. Okay? I don't mind. We're working together in this thing, right? That's right. We're building into one another. Okay? So, uh, chapter 7. This is Paul. It says, I write to you, dear brothers and sisters who are familiar with the law. Don't you know that when a person dies, it ends in his obligation to the law? For example, a married couple is bound by the law to remain together until separated by death. But when one spouse dies, the other is released from the law of the marriage. So then, if a wife is joined to another man while still married, she commits adultery. But if her husband dies, she is obviously free from that marriage contract and may marry another man without, without being charged with adultery. Verse 4, so my dear brothers and sisters, that same principle applies to your relationship with God. How so? For you died to your first husband, which is the law, by being co-crucified with the body of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. You are now free to marry another, the one who was raised from the dead, so that you may now bear spiritual fruit unto God. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's so powerful. Amen. So it's, it's just like done away with the old husband and now taking on Jesus, who is the bridegroom, the new husband, right? It's the same principle that you, why, why does this happen? That you, may bear, that you may bear spiritual fruit unto God. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. So all this happens, you're taking on Christ, you're letting go of the law, and we're going to read more into it, you're going to understand it better, Okay. So verse 5, when we were merely living natural lives, the law, through the defining sin, actually awakened sinful desires within us, which resulted in bearing the fruit of death. But now that we have been fully released from the power of the law, we are dead to what once controlled us. We have been fully released from the power of the law. Thank you, Jesus. That's something to rejoice about. And our lives are no longer motivated by the obsolete way of following the written code so that now we may serve God by living in the freshness of a new life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? I mean, that's something. Yeah, come on. I mean, give God, I mean, he sent his son for this, okay? So we can live in freshness of the new life by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the commandment the law that was intended to bring life brought death instead. Sin, by means of the commandment, built a base of operation within me to overpower me and put me to death. So then we have to conclude that the problem is not with the law itself, for the law was holy, but its commandments are correct and are for our good. All right, go to verse 13. The sacred commandment. It was, it was not the law, but sin unmasked that produced a spiritual death. The sacred commandment merely uncovered the evil of sin so it could be seen for what it is. For we know that the law is divinely inspired and comes from the spiritual realm. But I, we are human beings made of the flesh. Okay? The problem is, is the Lord is trying to take us from being a slave to sin to being his bond slave. And there's a, there's a, there's a directive in that because how many know that the old man is dead? Okay, we went over this so many times before. The old man is dead. God's not trying to fix the old man. He's not trying to, uh, to come, come around and say, oh, let me just go ahead and fix what's going on with you, what's happening with you, all the struggles of sin you're having. He's not trying to fix that. He wants to do away with the old man. Yeah. The old man is dead in the ground and gone. Thank you, Jesus. How do you yeah. I don't want him to touch my old man. See, he is bringing, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, right? Yeah. Everybody in here yeah. saved? Yeah. Who's yeah. not saved? Okay, so y'all understand, this is the word, this is my opinion. Okay, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. So what we do is we, we keep trying to pick up that old dead thing that's in the ground and put it on. And then we start stinking. Yeah. yeah. Struggling with our sin. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't know who we are. And I believe that's why the Lord said Romans 8. I'm like, okay, Romans 8. I love Romans 8. <laughs> But I get radical when I read it. I just eat it, you know. It's just like, ah. I'm always finding new revelation in the Word. I love the Word. 
The, we're supposed to become the word. We're supposed to be a walking, living, breathing translation of the word of God wherever we go. We shouldn't have to be carrying this around, though it's good. We should become this. It's, we are written epistles, known and read of all men. The word is alive in us when we speak. It's okay to know the addresses of scripture and quote all that. I'm not saying don't do that. Memorize it. Do whatever you have to do to get it in there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's not the addresses that I pay attention to. When I read it and I'm fasting, I take communion, I pray, and my husband knows, I eat it. Mm -hmm. I take one line and I eat it and say, it become a part of me. Because I am a written epistle to you. And so this is not always going to be available. Am I the only one that knows that? <laughs> In some countries, it's not. So, so we need to become the word wherever we go. It's alive, just like Jesus was the word in flesh. Come on, we'll go with that. Okay, so I'm going to rush through this because I, I only had a little bit of time for service. So I like, got a taste. So we've got to get through it, okay? You bear with me? Yep. Hopefully I don't lose you. All right, so verse uh, 25. Uh, still in 7 now, chapter 7. I give all my thanks to God for his mighty power that has finally provided a way out through our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. So if left to myself, the flesh is aligned with the law of sin. But now my renewed mind is fixed and submitted on God's righteous principles. So you were once left to the flesh and all the beggarly elements of the flesh. But now God had made a way out. Hallelujah. I got one who's happy about that. Yeah. He made a way out yeah. from that stench that keeps trying to drag you and pull you back. It keeps trying to take you back into that dark place. He's made a way out. And now he's even said to renew your mind as you fix your mind on the things of the spirit, the things that are above. This is the living word of God. You can't read this like a book. Okay. You can't read it like an autobiography of the father. You can't read it like that. It's living. It's alive. You have to have the Holy Spirit to understand it. Yes. Okay? It's the Spirit and life. So, it's being, your mind's being renewed by the Spirit through the Word of God. With God's righteous principles. Okay, now chapter 8. Now I'm going to leave a foundation for you. How many know what the law is? Okay. Why the law? Okay, why God? Okay, now we're going to understand this. Uh, chapter 8. Living by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I get really excited. <laughs> Because I love the Holy Ghost, and I'm not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. No. He's been with me since I was seven years old. Every step, of the, every step of the way of my life, he's been the only one there. Yeah, God sent people in my life, praise God, pastors, you know, different things. But the Holy Spirit's the only voice in my life that raised me from the dead. Yeah. He's the only voice in my life that brought me out. Oh. He's the only voice in my life that made me whole. You understand? So you have to, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can have the Holy Spirit today. Because God said, just like you love to give good gifts to your children, how much more will he give the Holy Ghost to those who ask? If you want the Holy Spirit, you can have the Holy Spirit. He's with you. He's alive. He's a person. He's the third person of the Trinity. He's the only one on earth today. Jesus is sit seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, and he sent the Holy Spirit for you. He's your comforter. He's your translator. Hallelujah. He's, he's uh, the only one who leads you and guides you into all truth. This is the Holy Ghost. And so a lot of people don't like to talk about the Holy Ghost, but I do. Okay? You see, he's everything. He's the one who translates the heart of Jesus to me. I wouldn't even know Jesus without the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't even know the Word without the Holy Ghost. I wouldn't even be able to love my children without the Holy Ghost. Okay, my daughter's here. I love her dearly, my youngest. I wouldn't even know how to love her the right way without the Holy Ghost. See, the problem is, is we don't think the Holy Spirit's there to help us. We just act like he's not present. everywhere and mostly he's in us can you believe that wow wow thank you lord thank you jesus so now chapter 8 verse 1 you ready for this so now the case is closed well glory come on saints you've got to be excited about this this is like ah, this is the raw goodness of god romans 8 this is the raw, authentic nature of who he is and what he has done for you. Lively stones in his house. 
So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. For the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. So it comes with liberty. He's liberated us. He's removed us from the law of sin and death and brought us into the law of the spirit of life. For God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. Mm -hmm. Yet God sent us his son in human form to identify with human weakness. Clothed him with humanity. God's son that gave his body to be a sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and the power of sin. Can you imagine that? Sometimes we get serving God, serving God all these years, and we forget actually what he did. He sent his only son and clothed him with humanity so that he could come down and understand, put humanity, gave his body as a sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn, hallelujah, the guilt and the power of sin. Why? Of course we know. Jesus took all that on himself. Well, the Lord. So now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. And we are free to live, not according to the flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. How many know we need to crucify the flesh? This is what I'm talking about here. We need to crucify those things that get in the way of our life union with Jesus. Okay? I will always speak on being united with Jesus as one. He is the bridegroom. We are the bride. It's scripture. It's a word. Find out for yourself. It's in there. It's all over the place. We are to become one with Jesus. We are to live in him, move him, and have our being in him. We are to love him with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and everything we got. We are to love Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Sounds like you're one with someone, right? Yeah. That's good. Okay? Everything yeah. is found in him. There's nothing else in this life that can compare to who he is, ever. If something does, I would check myself. Honestly, I love you enough to tell you the truth. I love you enough to tell you the truth. This is a holy place. I don't take it lightly. So check yourself if Jesus isn't your everything. Because if he's not your everything, something else will have you and something else will take you. Okay? He's the only way, the only truth, and the only life. There's nothing else but him. So the case is closed now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's glorious. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now let's go to um, verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. No, actually, I, I'm trying to rush it, but I really don't want to because I love this line upon line thing <laughs> with this. Uh, start with verse 6. Let's go back to verse 6. Yeah. For the mindset of the flesh is death. Now, it reads a little bit the same in your Bible with the, even the King James Version. It's just giving you a greater depth. Yeah. So, for the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Yeah. In fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan. Yes. Can you imagine that? When you're thinking in the flesh, it fights God's plan and refuses to submit to His direction. So your will is just like, it's not turned over to God. The flesh fights in direction. How many have an issue with his direction? You know, it's like a constant fight. It's a battle. Because it's like, if you submit to the Holy Spirit, destiny is just right there when you surrender. And he opens it up to you. It's so easy when you stay in him. He just lines it right up. And it's glorious. You don't have to do anything. And I told you this before, you know, it's the same way when, when you're walking in the spirit, you know, you don't have, there's no work when it comes to producing fruit. It just pops up. It's almost like you, so you're not doing anything. All of a sudden, all this fruit's coming around you. Why? Because you're living and abiding in him. Glory, hallelujah. I got one here who's excited about that. I love it. I love serving Jesus. There's nothing like serving Jesus. Hallelujah. He takes care of everything, especially when you're married to him. <laughs> no lack for no thing. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yes. Okay, that's a whole other sermon. That was 10 years ago. That's pretty, yeah. 
We have no want for no fame when he's truly our shepherd. Yes. Right. Yeah. True. Truly our shepherd. No. <laughs> so <laughs> when you're in the flesh, it's not going to submit to the destiny of God. It's not going to submit to what God wants for you. What the flesh does is it's constantly fighting it. It's constantly tor tormenting you on it. Yeah. Or maybe uh, I have to do this, Lord, in order for you to love me. Or I have to do this so that I can be okay with who I am. Or it's even in a sense of even going to church every Sunday, you know, just to kind of make your conscience feel better. You're just going through the motions. I'm speaking truth here now. Yeah. Because you're really not in love. Right. That's right. Okay? We don't want that. And I know y'all don't want that. We want what's real and what's true. And what's yes. alive and what's well. And that's Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So this flesh will fight it. And no matter how hard they try, God finds no pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh. There's no good thing in the flesh, period. Right. Anytime it comes up, beat it to death. I don't care what you got to do. Get it out. Yes. Crucify it. Beat it to death. Constantly. Because it's constantly coming at you. Verse 12, so then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claims on us at all, and we have no further obligation to live in obedience to it. For when you live controlled by the flesh, you will die. Yes. Is that what your Bible says? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. We're good then. But if the life of the Spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, then we will begin to taste abundant life. Yes. You know, I grew up in the church, so sometimes... Like, I remember some of the scriptures that they would pound in us, you know, like, you know, if you serve Jesus, all of a sudden you have life and life and that, have that life more abundantly and all this stuff. But I never did see it in anyone's life <laughs> growing up in the church. I'm, I'm just being serious. Growing up in the church. I'm not even, I mean, in my own family. I never did see it. And it was like, it was hard for me because... I really had this love for Jesus, and I was happy all the time, and I kind of stayed to myself, but I was always singing songs to him, and I was just like full of joy, and I couldn't see it in the church, so I hated going. Because I had more fun with myself and Jesus. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, I did. I had more fun. Did you guys, you guys ever experience that? You go to church, and you get more bound, you got to get all this stuff up. Not, I'm not talking about the church. I love the church. I understand what I'm saying, but this is my experience. So I cry out to God, and my teenagers like, God, oh, what is going on? I didn't understand it. What's this life more abundantly? Yeah. Yeah. And I found it. Mm -hmm. When I went through the darkest time in my life, I found it. And it's divine union with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because yeah. in that place is fullness of joy. Yeah. Yeah. If you ain't got no joy, you're not in his presence. No. The Bible says the presence is the fullness of joy. When you find that joy, when you find that sacred oil, yes. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> nothing can compare. There's nothing on this earth that's worth touching and compromising your oil. Y'all with me? So life move union with Jesus and Jesus taking him with you through everything that you ever go through produces that oil. Yes. Yeah. Because it's his name that is an oil poured out on us all. You see? So if you feel like, what's this joy? you got to connect. That life union with Jesus by the Spirit causes a connection between you and Him. Amen. Where He becomes everything. Yeah. Really good. That was free. I'm sorry, I love Him. I'm in love with Him. Woo! Jesus. So... Sons and daughters destined for glory. Because now we're on the right track, right? We, don't, we understand the law now. So now we're uh, being filled with his spirit. And now we're going to rush into his destiny, right? Why? Because we've yielded ourselves. We've surrendered ourselves. And now we understand that the law has no more power over us. It exposes sin, but we dealt with it through what? The blood of Jesus Christ and the cross. So now we're going in. Uh, sons and daughters destined for glory. The mature children of God, okay, are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. So if it feels like you're, you know, the true, I say, the true key to see if there's someone really mature in Christ, I'm not talking about gifts. 
I don't look for gifts. Even when God brings leaders and stuff that, for lilies of the valley, gifts are, they're not important to me. Okay? And honestly, character, that'll come later. I don't look for character. Okay? You know what I look for? Humility. Yeah. Surrender. Yeah. Someone who understands, who's mature, and who lets the Holy Spirit lead them. They could be a broken mess. Lord knows. I don't care. <laughs> if they know how to surrender to the Holy Ghost, and they know that Jesus is everything to, to them, they're it. Yeah. No matter if they don't have any gifts, because I know they'll come. Yeah. They come from that place. And the fruit, the fruit is the fruit of the Spirit. If the fruit, the fruit is going to be there, love, peace, joy, love, suffering, peace, all that's going to be there in their connection with Jesus because he's divine, right? Yeah. So if they're connected to him, I'm like, yes, let's go. Yeah. And I can tell. I can tell. Yeah. The Lord's given me the eyes to see. I can tell who has oil and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. I can see counterfeit from truth. Amen. My daughter knows. <laughs> oh, all these gifts and people flying out, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> Praying and prophesying, all kinds of stuff is happening, but God lets me see. I don't know why He didn't give me that gift. I don't know why I'm telling you this. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, what's she seeing right <laughs> I love y'all. No, no, no. I, I can just see it because I walk through it and I live through it. I died in it. Yes. Okay, I died in it. And sometimes He walks us through things that we can see things, right, sweetheart? I love my youth. They're so awesome. She's like, yes. <laughs> okay, so, so the maturity, the evidence of a mature person is one who's moved by the Holy Ghost, the true Holy Spirit. Okay? That you do not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back to the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance. Wow, Crystal. You have received the spirit of full acceptance. Yes. Okay? Enfolding you into the family of God, and you will never feel orphaned ever again. Can you imagine? You will never feel orphaned ever again. This is the word of God. This is not my opinion. This isn't me. So you will never feel orphaned again. For he, as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved Father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us, and he whispers into our innermost being, you are my beloved son. Abba, Father. It's in the King James Version. When we cry out, we cry out, Abba, Father. Can you imagine how many people are fatherless in this generation? I mean, this, all generations, really. I mean, it's, it's an epidemic. Okay? He's a father to the fatherless. Mm -hmm. What if somebody told somebody who feels fatherless about this scripture here? Yes. He wants to be a father to them. Hello? But he wants to be a father to them through you. That's how the Holy Spirit works. Amen. The Father's heart, what? Comes through us. Amen. The evidence of who he is. And you will never feel orphaned again. And since we are his true children, now that you know this, Everyone in here raised their hand and said you were saved, so this is you. You're it. Yes. Amen. Okay? And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all of his treasures. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, what, that's my granddaughter. My granddaughter. That's how I feel when I read this. You know how many times I've read this? Every time I read it, I get more excited. So we get to share all his treasures. For indeed, and a lot of people don't preach this part. It's the first one. Because I know in the King James Version, it says we're heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. I know what the King James Version says. But this says we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we are also inheriting all that he has and is in his Father. Woo! So we never read that part. We are heirs of God. Yes. And joint heirs of Jesus. Yes. We are heirs of God, the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The creator of the universe. <laughs> are you getting that? Yes. So find out who God is yes. and what you're an heir to. Jesus' will and testament right there. Yeah. It's all yours. That excites me. 
So heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. We will experience being co-glorified with him, provided that we accept his sufferings as our own. So you need to take on everything that Jesus is. We fellowship with his sufferings, right? Yes. We have long suffering, the fruit, one of the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. We fellowship with his sufferings. We offer him fruits of righteousness for all of his sufferings by the things that we do, right? The things that we walk out for him in obedience to his heart. So we become one with him. It's a divine fellowship. So I want to go to verse 18 now. This is your glorious destiny. Am I doing good on time? Because I can get lost. Okay. You're good. Okay. Let me know. This is so good. <laughs> All right, so a glorious destiny, verse 8. I am convinced hmm. that any suffering that we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. Yes. Hallelujah! <laughs> the entire universe is standing on tiptoe. King James Version is standing in awe. Okay, it's trembling, it's groaning, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. That's you. Wow. Yes. He just said that you were not an orphan, that you have a father. Yes. He is the one who created the universe. Also said you are an heir of the father. Yes. Yeah. In case you didn't know, or you might have forgotten, Lord sent me here today to remind you. <laughs> so now, he's unveiling you. And whatever you're suffering right now, how many are going through battles? Come on now. Ooh. I know. And it's pressing, right? It's crushing and it's pressing. It's bringing out that oil like the olive. But you know what? You're going through these battles, but nothing in that battle is going to compare the glory that's going to come out of you because of that. Yes. Because you endured. Because you took the Lord with you in that battle. That's what produces the oil. Yeah. You see? So the glory that's going to rest on you can't even be compared to what you suffered. That's good. I read in the word where the Lord, <coughs> where God said that he would glorify his sons and daughters. Why does he have to glorify you? I know some of you say, oh, God will share his glory with no other. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about sons and daughters who understand who it is. Who understand it's his glory. Okay? He's going to glorify you. Why? Because he's raising up his sons and daughters in the earth. That bear his name. It's for his name's sake. Period. Yeah. Because he has to bring in harvest. Wants to bring in harvest. And he's coming soon. This is why. So whatever you're going through. The glory that's going to come out of it. Priceless. 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 Raising up sons and daughters. All right, let's go to, uh, hmm. but now with eager expectation, verse 21, all creation longs for freedom from its slavery to decay and to experience with us the wonderful freedom compared, uh, coming to God's children. To this day, we are aware of the universal agony and groaning of creation as if it were in the contractions of labor of childbirth. This King James Version said that the earth is groaning in travail because nature is waiting for the sons and daughters of God to manifest. Why? Because we rule and reign here. Yes. We've forgotten. Yes. We've allowed the enemy to come and squat on our land. Yes. Yes. Telling you the truth. Yes. 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 And it's not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruits of the Spirit also inwardly groan as we passionately long to experience our full status as God's sons and daughters, including our physical bodies being transformed, for this is the hope of our salvation. So not only is the earth groaning in travail, our spirits is groaning. You ever feel that sometimes when you're praying? It's like you don't know what you're praying for, but the Holy Ghost does. Yes. And he's praying through you. Yes. Groanings that cannot be uttered, that cannot be reset, because you don't even know what they are. It's just a groan in you that comes out. Sometimes the Spirit of the Lord will do that. Hallelujah, because he's bringing something to birth. Because we don't know what to pray for, but the Spirit himself bears witness and knows what to pray for. He prays the heart of the Father. You all know the Holy Ghost, right? He prays the heart of the Father. Okay. All right, so verse 26. 
And in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weaknesses. Wow. In times we don't know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us and intercedes on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. Wow. God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desires of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan for our destiny. Wow. Wow. So Jesus ever makes intercession for us, right? Yes. And the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. What's our problem? Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of Moses on the mountain. Remember when the, her and Aaron held up his arms? And, and you know, Aaron is symbolizes the priest, Jesus Christ, the Christ, her, and the Holy Spirit. Holding up Moses' arms. That's what the Holy Spirit and Jesus does for us. And I hate to say this, and I mean this politely. Sometimes we're so ignorant, we don't know what we got. Yeah. We don't know what God has done for us. We're so busy praying, asking God to change this and change that, fix this and fix that, and do this and do that, that we forget exactly what he's already done and what he wants us to receive. We've forgotten who we are. I read in my Bible where it said Jesus made an open show of our enemy and stripped him of all of his weapons. Yes, sir. And embarrassed him. Made him powerless. Y'all read that before? Am I the only one? Okay. So why are we giving him his power back? Whoa. Some of us give more glory to the enemy than we do to God. He said, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Greater is he. There's no threat. Thank you, Lord. All right, so. Hmm. So we are convinced that every detail of our life is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. It says in, in the King James Version, but we know that all things work together for the good to those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Is that you? Yes. All right, so when you go through something, just start rejoicing. And just say, the Bible said, you know, my husband said, all things work together for my good. Yes. And get your Bible out and start reading it to that enemy that thinks he has gained ground in your life. <laughs> the only way he's gained ground in your life is he can get you to believe the lie that he did. Because I read my word that we are more than conquerors. He has no place in me. He has no spot in me. And he cannot gain any ground in my life. That's good. Why? Because of my husband. <laughs> Because of who I'm one with. His name is Jesus. Because I did away with the law, like he said, and married Jesus, who is life and liberty and freedom and justice and truth. Come on, one clap right there. That's my girl. She loves the word too. And my young adults know I don't try to get them to be anything that they're not. I want them to be who God created them to be. And those at times it may look a little different. I don't care. You want to paint your fingernail? Paint your fingernail. You want to do this? Do it. As long as you love Jesus. Yeah. Because the Holy Ghost is the one who transformed the heart, not me. Yeah. Uh -uh, I know better than touch that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Don't touch it. Trust him. Don't touch it. Okay? Let him, the Holy Spirit, work through you could be just being in their presence and people you're praying for in your life. It doesn't matter. Don't push them away by your own thoughts and what you think about the situation because it don't matter what you think. Jesus loves them. Right? I mean, look at Zacchaeus in the Bible. I don't know. I got to obey the Holy Spirit on this. this. This story. I think we shared it last Wednesday. 
Zacchaeus in the Bible. Remember that story, everyone with me, when he climbed up the tree because Jesus was coming into the town? He climbed up the tree because he was so short he couldn't see. Man, I need one of those towels for those, you know, kind of creatures that fit. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> God's good. Anyway, he climbs up the tree and Jesus is coming into town. Okay. And as soon as Jesus spots him in the tree, he says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house for dinner. Zacchaeus is a crook. Yeah. Okay? Tax collector crook. So the disciples look at Jesus and says, Why are you going to his house for dinner? And he says, I'm going to his house for dinner. And you know the name Zacchaeus means pure in Hebrew? Wow. So Jesus goes to his house for dinner. And because of the love that Jesus had in him, who he was and who he is, sitting down eating dinner with Zacchaeus, a crook. Zacchaeus stands up and says to him, whatever you want me to do, I will sell all that I have and give it to the poor, and I will even pay back four times what I stole from every person I stole from. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. This Jesus, all he did was sit down and eat. <laughs> all I'm doing is sitting down with them. You know, we didn't have anyone take over the young adults. I'm doing a full-time women's ministry. I got five, six, seven hundred thousand things going on. Most of my time's at his feet, though. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. But I got so many things going on. No one was going to do it. The Lord said, oh, I'd like you to do that. Teach them purity like you're doing with the lilies. Yeah. And I struggled with it. I said, yes, sir. I did it. Don't have to do anything but be who you are and let them be who they are. And let Jesus love through you. Amen. Even if it's just you sitting there and listening. Amen. Like Jesus did with Zacchaeus. Yeah. I believe that Jesus, when he saw Zacchaeus, they didn't even know that they never met. Jesus knew his name. Can you imagine? Here's a crook by the tree. Did you see what's going on? And Jesus says, I'm going to your house for dinner. <laughs> Come on now. That's a convicting power of love. Yeah. Come to my house. Come to my house. I'm a crook. I stole from all these people. You want to come to my house? Yes. yes. Because I see pure. Yes. Ah. <laughs> I see pure. Mm -hmm. I don't see a crook. Amen. So, I got to brag on my young adults because I see pure. Mm -hmm. You might see all the effects of some of the things that they've gone through, but I see pure. <clears throat> She want to come right up here and sit by me. I'm so blessed by that. I want to cry like a little baby. <laughs> She's beautiful. All of them are. Desmond. Every one of them. But I don't know why I got into that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, where was I? <laughs> where was I? <laughs> okay. So having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone in goal. He transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone that he called. Did the Lord call you? Yes. Did he call you? Yes. Truly. Yes. Do you feel the call of God in your heart? Yes. So he transferred his righteousness to you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your own righteousness is his filthy rags, but he transferred his righteousness to you. And it's perfect. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. So what does all this mean? What does all this mean? What God wants to convey his heart to you. What does it all mean? I'm facing the text. Okay? Verse 31. If God has determined to stand with us, okay, who can ever stand against us? King James Version. God be for us, who can be against us? This is what this means. God is for you. God is for you. The enemy wants you to think he's not. He is for you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how bad it looks. Today he wants you to know he's for you. He's always been for you. 
You know, one of our earmarks for the Lilies of the Valley, I teach on the book of Hosea. It's a, it's a, it's a, the book of Hosea is God's heart for Israel, God's heart for us. He's constantly pursuing us, just like Hosea. He told, go love a harlot, pursuing her. God is pursuing you. He's running after you. He loves you. He's reckless. Can you remember when you were in the world, did you feel like God was still there? He was tugging at your heart? When you were doing things you shouldn't have done, was he not there? Yes. He was there. He's still there. He's still waiting on you. He's done everything he said he's going to do right here. So God is for you today. So who can be against you? Nothing and no one. Exactly. Nothing and no one. For God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure. And I shared this a couple of Wednesdays ago when I spoke here. He's shared his greatest treasure with us. He gave us his only son, his pride and joy, his only son, he handed over. I read in the word where he spared Isaac. Did he not spare Isaac? Yes. But he didn't spare his only son. Yes. His only son. Because he wanted you to know, this is what you mean to me. He was saying, this is what you mean to me, that I gave you my son. Shame on us that we forget what he's done. That we forget all that he's done for us. All that he's given. We're not falling short. We're not lacking anything. He's our shepherd. What are we lacking? I mean, I just read to you a wealth of information from the word of God. So God is for you. So no one can be against us. He's proved his love by giving his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as a sacrifice for us all, he certainly will not hold anything else back from you. <laughs> what else does he have? I mean, he has everything, but that's his son. If he's going to give you his only son, his pride and joy, his precious son, he will not hold anything else back from you, ever. He loves you recklessly. How can we not give him our whole life? How can we not give him our whole heart? How can we not give him our, all of our children? How can we not give him our grandchildren? How can we not give him our home? How can we not give him this house that belongs to him anyway? It's his. How can we not, based on the fact of everything that he has done, Uh, and who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? God himself is the judge who has issued his final verdict over them. Not guilty. God issued you not guilty. Why? Because Jesus took on your guilt. He paid the price. You should have been the one to die. I should have been the one to die. Go ahead, Speedy. You can clap. <laughs> I teach the youth on the Holy Spirit and the blood, so they understand, they get excited. Okay, so Jesus took on all of your sin. Everything. And you know what's so glorious about that? When he went to hell, take the keys to hell, death, and the grave, he left all of your sin in the pit of hell when he came up. When he went down, he left it. Yes. He came up, glory, mm. glorified. Woo! Glorified. Mm -hmm. So just remember that. When the enemy tries to come in and tell you who he thinks you are and wants you to think who you think you are, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm feeling really, like, drunk of the spirit right now. Sorry. Yeah. I'm crying really hard. <laughs> It's a good thing, okay? Rather than drunk in spirit than sober in the flesh, okay? Yes. Sober minded in the Word of God, yes, but understand what I'm saying. I feel the presence of the Lord. Ooh, it's waiting. Yes. So when He went to hell, He left all your stuff there. That is so glorious to me. Yes. <laughs> Did the Lord actually free you from something? Yes. Did He save you from something? Yes. Because maybe the people around you have forgotten. Maybe you forgot. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> well, glory. All right, so 
This is this is the glorious part. I'm, I'm almost. Um, is that my timer? No, that's right. Okay. So I'm almost there, Ray. I'm almost there. Okay, the head is crowning. <laughs> Thanks for that vision. Wow. to condemn us, right? Right. right? Who then is left to condemn us? No one. Certainly not Jesus, the anointed one, for he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death and has now risen, exalted and enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he's continually praying for our triumph? Who can ever separate us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. And this is the ending part of Romans 8 that I love so much because a lot of people will try to tell you because you messed up or you did something wrong that God doesn't love you no more. Yeah. And you are your worst enemy when it comes to that when you mess up. Yeah. That is not true. Yes. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love towards us. No trouble. No pressure, no problem. None of them are unable to come between us and heaven's love. No persecutions, no deprivations, no dangers, no death threats. <sighs> For they're all impotent to hinder an omnipotent love. <sighs> Even though it is written all day long we face death threats. For God's sake, we're considered to be nothing more than sheep to the slaughter. But yet in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors and has demonstrated his love as our glorious victory over everything. Not some things, everything. So now we live, I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. We are convinced that his love will triumph over death. Life's troubles, fallen angels, dark rulers in the heavens. So Satan can't even, okay? None of his imps can separate us. Doesn't matter how dark it is. Like David said, if I lay my bed in hell, you're there. If I lay my bed in hell, right? If I'm up in the, high, in the heights, you're there. There is nothing in our present or our future circumstances that can weaken or separate us from his love. There is no power above us. There is no power beneath us. No power that can ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love for us, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. Yeah. Wow. That's something to rejoice about. Yeah. Rosh Hashanah. You hear that, Shofar? Yes. That's glorious. So love has made us more than conquerors in four ways. I'm going to read these four ways to you. So no situation in life can defeat us or, delight, de, ugh, or delude God's love for us. Number two, we know that the divine love and power that works for us is a triumph in all things. Three, we share in the victory spoils of every enemy that we face. That's Isaiah. He'll always give us the spoils from whatever battle we go through. Isn't that glorious? What are the spoils? Well, part of it is the glory that's going to rest upon you because you've come through something. So now you can strengthen the brethren. Now you can go and give somebody else a, a, you know, a word of encouragement because you walk through it with Jesus. Okay, the fourth one, we have conquered the conqueror with merely a glance of his worshiping eyes. We have won his heart, Psalm 4, 9. And Song of Solomon says that you, you've won me with your worshiping eyes. So as you worship him, you've conquered him, you've won his heart. He loves you so much. 
He loves you so much. If you could just grasp this today of what he's done for you and who you are and how the law it was to expose the sin, but now he's done away with that. We're no longer under the law of sin and death, but we are in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Isn't that glorious? Yes. Amen. We are now sons and daughters of the Most High. Yes. Now we can go into our destiny as we crucify the flesh, as we lay down those things yes. Yes. that so easily beset us, right? right? That entangle us, affairs of this life, all these things. Mm -hmm. And we can move on now today, right? Yes. So the Lord's given you some instruction to remind you of who you are. God is for us. Who can be against us? He is for you today. He is for you today. Um, wow. God is good. Did you play that on your phone? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So get into Romans 8 and really study it. Get into all the word and really study it. Yeah. But Romans 8 is glorious. If you're struggling with sin, or if you're struggling with some part of the flesh in you, uh, letting go of those things, if you're having a hard time, ask the Lord to reveal by the Holy Spirit his scripture. Ask the Lord to make alive his word. Ask the Lord to do that, and he will. And when it comes alive in you and becomes living, it starts separating, it starts confirming and transforming, right? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. The word is what? Sharp and powerful, like a two-edged sword. It goes really deep. This is Hebrews now. It goes really deep, and it cuts, and it divides the soul from the spirit, the word of God. Did you know the word does that? Yes. yes. Okay? It even reveals the intent of the heart. Yeah. yeah. You get in this word, God will show you what's in your heart that isn't right. And he'll help you fix it. That's how glorious he is. So let's stand. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for this word. We just thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for everyone you brought here, Lord. Lord, may this word find its place. I bind every spirit that would try to come against this word. In the name of Jesus, I bind every hindering force. Yes. They will try to darken the mind of those in here from receiving this word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that I know the enemy's right out that door to try and steal and rob mm. from your word that was engrafted and implanted in the hearts of your people. I rebuke and I resist. I resist him right now in the name of Jesus. I submit to you, Lord, and the word that you have given me for this people, Lord, your people that you love dearly. And Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would go deep right now and speak and quicken, hallelujah, that you would quicken on the inside, hallelujah, the word that you want to make alive in them, that you would quicken it and that you would bring it forth and that they would come to a knowledge and an understanding, hallelujah, of who you are, Holy Spirit. Lead them and speak words that are comely and, and awesome and amazing and lovely to them. Speak to their heart, Lord, and let them know, Lord Jesus, uh, what you want to take them into by your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that the Holy Spirit not only translates the heart of the Father, but translates the life and heart of Jesus. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would infill these people and that you would begin to speak word, hallelujah, into their hearts that would just resurrect, Father, the dream that you had given them, Father. That they would come to know who they are in you, Lord. And I thank you for that, Father. I thank you for what you're doing in them, Lord. I thank you that you sent them here for a purpose and for a reason. Lord, help us to understand that you see something that we don't see. Sometimes we see Zacchaeus the crook, hallelujah, but you see pure and holy. You see what it is to see in Philippians 1, 6. You see the finished product in us. You see who you created in us, Lord. And I thank you for that, that you look beyond the sin. Help us to not be offended at sin, Father, even with the people in our lives. Help us to not be offended at their sin, God. But help us to love them in the deepest places of who they are, with your eye, with your heart, with your understanding, with your truth. And Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you, Father, that you are for us. Yes. So who can be against us? 
You are for us, Father. Hallelujah. And Lord, I just ask right now, anyone here, Lord, who doesn't know you intimately, who doesn't know you, hallelujah, as they're being, as you being their everything, Lord, that they would give themselves over to you in complete surrender, that they would stop running, that they would give themselves over to you, Lord, completely and fully. Father, I ask you, God, that you would prick their conscience and pierce their heart yeah. with your presence and who you are, God. That they would turn their will over completely to you, Lord Jesus. That you could begin to transform them and make them right, Father God, and put them on the straight path, Lord. Hallelujah. Get them on the narrow way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise and honor and glory for what you're doing, hallelujah, even now by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just bless these people, Lord, that you brought here, Lord. Hallelujah. Keep them in your presence, Lord. Yeah. Continue to minister to them, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. If there's anybody here who hasn't given their heart to Jesus, I know it looks like everyone's raising their hands, and you want to come up and you want to give your heart to Jesus, then you can do that too. But if there's anybody here who wants prayer or who needs prayer, you'd like us to pray for them. I have my team here, Barbara, uh, that is on the road, but we'll pray for you. Um, whatever you have need of, the Lord has it. He's everything. I love y'all.